a clean room is an area that is a room um, that particle concentration, as well as many other parameters, but it must be particle uh, concentration for being a clean room, is carefully controlled. Uh, we're an ISO 3 facility, which is pretty well on the lower edge of anything in existence. Um, we are the cleanest university clean room in the country. So ISO 3 means that we have less than one particle per cubic foot of air oh, wow. floating around in the um, the 300 nanometer and above, or fi excuse me, 500 nanometer and above range. Uh, on a very dry day uh, with the wind blowing outside, uh, you could be you know well over a million particles per cubic foot. And the small particles in the clean room are swept out by very high amounts of airflow. Um, you change the air in your house about six times an hour, just in normal circulation. Uh, in our clean room, we change the air in the clean room nine and a half times a minute. We're working in the nanometer range, which is extremely small, just above the molecular level. And anything that, that well, there are two major mechanisms for particles causing a failure of the research that we're doing. Uh, one is what we call shadowing, and that's where a particle obscures what we're trying to do, especially in lithography where you're actually printing images like you would in photography only on a three-dimensional uh, level. Um, and a particle on there would shadow and obscure the very small geometries we're working with and make the device not work. Um, the second, uh, second mechanism is more chemical and that's every particle has some kind of a chemical f signature to it. It's made of something that is chemical. So when you put that in one of these reactors, especially if you heat up the reactor, things like that, you can actually create a chemical reaction that will confound the research. So what we're trying to do is eliminate any outside interference to the research that's being done so that we have a high level of confidence in, uh, in what is actually happening.